Hello, how are you? My name is Alejandro Sandoval. This is the Solo Negocios video, video blog for the ninth week of 2022. We're going to begin with indicators where on last Monday, INEGI exposed the uh, National Occupation and Employment Survey for um, the month of January. And well, basically it showed that the labor situation in Mexico hasn't changed that much, but improved yearly uh, with an increase of uh, 3 million persons occupied and a decrease of 117,000 persons in uh, unemployment. In terms of uh, non-working people, well, unworking people uh, or active people, 68.1% of the occupied uh, population, which is which accounts for 57, 57 million inhabitants, well, 68% were workers. 22% worked uh, by their own, 5% were employers, and 4.3% were working at family businesses. From the, the suboccupied people, uh, there's a reduction uh, for all data available of 9% of this uh, population along men and women. And for uh, informality, 54.9%, 55.5% 55 for women and 54.4% for men. And finally, uh, the unemployment rate 3.7%, 3.8% on men, and 3.6% on women. Well, uh, on the maquiladora indicators, employment lost a little bit, 0.2% of December, and kept losing since January, since July, excuse me, given, I believe, mostly the semiconductors issue. Uh, the, anyways, the, the, the employment generated by this subsector of the economy increased 2.1% yearly, to 3 million 91,000 inhabitants working here. Obviously the outsourced people decreased amazingly 85% given the new law in Mexico. From the whole uh, maquiladora establishments in the country, 17.7% were in Baja California, 12.6% in Nuevo Leon and 9.1% in Chihuahua. And in employment in Chihuahua had 13.6% of the whole employment Baja California 13.1% and Nuevo León 10.8%. In other data, uh, given the, the, the debt, uh, debt toll rate and excess debts compared to pre-pandemic years, well, we're talking about around uh, 200,000, 300,000 more debts than 2019. Specifically, uh, given the 2015-2019 period, from a January 2020 to September 2021, there was expected 1,288,000, 1, 1, deaths, but they happened 1,941,000 1, deaths. That is 653,000 more in that year and nine months, 50.7% more and obviously should be related a great number of those to uh, COVID-19. On uh, the municipalities, we have certain data for 2020 year. And well, in terms of um, equity between men and women working as, as uh, public officers, 64.7% were men, 35.3% were women and it doesn't seem to improve along the past years given this graph. And also in terms of their budget, well, it decreased from 2016 from 556 billion pesos to 492 billion, then it increased to 523 billion and up to 520, 36 billion pesos for the municipalities, which accounts for, I don't know, maybe 8% of the federal budget run. And in terms of agreements, uh, the trend over corruption, you know, direct adjudication of services, uh, leasing and acquisitions, 65,000 leasing agreements directly assigned, 35,000 
or over 35,000 uh, public works. Uh, invitation to at least three people to participate in the uh, contract, 6, 000, uh, over 6,000 for services and almost 20,000 for public works. And then, well, the rest, you know, which is very few. Badly, badly handled this matter in Mexico. In mining, well, the production decreased 7.2% yearly and almost in the main uh, metals and other type of mine, mi minerals, we had decreases. Gold, 2.1%, silver increased 1.3%, um, uh, copper decreased 0.9%. Uh, among others, bad, bad situation for uh, mining. The MF indicator showed growth for the manufacturing indicator as well as the non-manufacturing indicator, but a very small growth to take it over the threshold of 50 points, which implies an expansion zone abandoning the contraction zone, but very, very slow. So it implies that the Mexican economy is moving very slowly. If we compare the bad fourth quarter of 2021, the negative uh, MF indicator for January and this slow movement upwards in February, but at least is, is positive. In the sub indicators, we have only uh, delivery growing, but still under the threshold. And for the service sector, we have almost all of them positive besides the trend, which kept going down, and the delivery of products. Also, INEGI exposed the monthly business opinion indicator or survey with the three indicators. The expectative uh, indicator for manufacturing services, construction, and uh, trade or commerce, all of them were positive not that strong, but kept them over the 50 point threshold for all of the sub indicators. And then the trust indicator, which is like questions regarding what's going on on the economy. And well, all of them also were positive, but like small movements. So it implies a recovery, but not necessarily a strong recovery. And finally, the uh, manufacturing uh, indicator, like the IMEF indicator, but from INEGI, is uh, still going 12 consecutive months over the 50 point threshold. It stood 2.3 points over one year ago to 51.8 points, and it's still positive. But it recognizes, given the graph, the fall on the fourth quarter of 2021. Then the ISM reports the uh, service indicator, which also have increases. No, this is the manufacturing, excuse me, this is manufacturing one, increases over monthly uh, basis, 57.6 points on January, 58.6 in uh, February, only customer inventories, prices and employment went down maybe employment is not that good e, and uh, prices uh, were like, uh, it's, a, it's a good news that it's going down, but all respondents saying that it's a mess, the situation over their subsectors. Then Banco de Mexico exposed its quarterly, four quarter uh, report, economic report, talking about the situation of the economy in that moment, not taking into account the war between Russia and Ukraine. So basically what we're talking here is in increasing inflation, um, given the pandemic's uh, origin, uh, also 14 months increasing the underlying inflation, uh, almost some months with two digits on the non-underlying inflation, and obviously pressures over growth. So uh, the work of Banco de Mexico is to try to provide an orderly decrease on inflation. Worldwide uh, growth expectations going down, inflation worldwide uh, expectations going up, and the same for Mexico. Specifically, the bad scenarios on the risk balance for the growth in Mexico is the pandemics, new waves, or a war, which was not mentioned here, but obviously, um, 
to keep go having problems with the supply of different products worldwide, like those semiconductors, a piece of volatility at the financial markets, and a smaller recovery on the public finances. Then you know, he exposed the cyclical indicator system with add finally uh, an over the threshold result for the coincident indicator for the month of December with 0.11% growth to the threshold 100. It stood there, good. And the uh, advanced indicator, it decreased 15 uh, basis points to 100.9 points, which is not good, but still over the threshold. So it shows that it's going relatively more or less uh, slow, the economy on December, which showed the quarterly GDP result, and then a uh, bad scenario for January, but not enough to go under the threshold. The Energy Information Agency from the US reported inventories, US crude oil inventories for the, that government or for that country with a decrease of 2.6 million barrels from previous week, 413 million barrels, 12% below five, uh, five year average for this time of the year, bad scenarios, Zarzidi, then oil prices increasing, gasoline prices increasing, as you can see in the table. 3.60% gallon uh, prices, US dollar gallon prices uh, for February 28th with an increase of uh, 8 cents. And diesel went to $4.10 uh, 10 cents per gallon with an increase of 5 cents. Then Banco de Mexico showed the monthly survey for specialists of the private sector and all of them decreased their expectations or they went negative. Inflation grew to 4.78% by the end of the month of, of December, 2022, or the yearly inflation, 3.83 finally by 2023. Underlying inflation still wrong and strong, 4.65% by uh, the year 2022, and 3.72% by the... Um, 2023 year. Growth on GDP, 2.04% on 2022, 2.13% in 2023, making the reach of recovery of the pre-pandemic data very far away. Exchange rate for this year, at the end of the year, 21 pesos, 25 cents per dollar. At the end of 2023, 21 pesos and 71 cents per dollar. And the uh, Banco de Mexico rate 7.39% by the end of the year and 7.59% by the end of 2023, which is stronger every time. Now the ISM uh, service PMI, it showed a decrease from 59.9 in January to 56.5 points in uh, February. We decreases in several sub indicators uh, but also still having a lot of negative answers. Not negative. There's a strong demand of services and commerce uh, service or commercial services, but a lot of problems: labor, transportation, supplies, etc. And now inflation also. So uh, a delicate situation over there. Department of Labor showing initial claims for uh, unemployment: two hundred fifteen thousand is a result with a decrease of 18,000, still improving, four week moving average, 1.5 million with a decrease of 36,000, good, but every time flatter the recovery. Well, also IMEF showed the consumption indicator for December 2021, which increased 1.5% in December, 7.4% yearly. The December data is not good, but the yearly one is good. So we can see the graph. Actually, in the graph, we can see a good December. So I might uh, take out uh, that, that argument. On private investment, it grew 1.2% in December, 8.1% yearly. But the graph shows an improvement, but steady over the year. Obviously, against 2020, it was amazingly bad, you know? There's a, an improvement, but the problem is that it stood since April up to today. So when the inflation increased greatly. 
Institutional accounts for GDP on third quarter 2021, basically from 100% GDP value on that third quarter, taxes were 6.1%, non-financial uh, corporations 46.7%, financial corporation 4%, government 8.3%, homes or households 34%, and uh, non-lucrative uh, institutions, 0.9%. Also on vehicles, production was January and February agglomerated or added against a year before, a decrease of 4.6%, exports decreased 4.35%, and sales in Mexico decreased for 3.85%, obviously meaning a situation on semiconductors. Now, the jurisdictional radar from ANAVE showed a very interesting uh, precedent from a circuit collegiate uh, court, which is an isolated thesis. It's not a rule yet, but it imposed it to this case, but it could be used for further analysis, other cases. And they are talking about dignity. When a preliminary exam averts affectation or damage over the human right of the person claiming for amparo, it has to be of the greatest protection and warranty from the state. For, therefore, there should be a provisional suspension granted to that person. Remember, an amparo trial is an amparo, is a, is a, is a lawsuit against the government because of one action or a law. So, this case specifically is a former public officer. It was subject to, he or she was subject to uh, an administrative revision. And that person went after an amparo saying that she, that person was not in agreement with the uh, perspective of the, that trial. And that person claimed for a suspension, suspension which implies until the amparo court uh, resolution is finished, then nothing can be moved over the administrative uh, case. She was denied that suspension or she or he, I don't know. And then the circuit court basically claimed that it should be granted. Why? Because dignity could be damaged while the, the Amparo trial is going and is resolved. And if they don't grant the suspension, the administrative uh, management or procedure will keep going. And that will imply a public damage of that image of that person. So given that the dignity is potentially to be damaged, that administrative procedure has to be stopped, freezed, until the amparo resolution comes on. Well, over that case, I believe that concept should be considered for other cases. For example, tax matters. Interesting. Two initiatives on law. One made uh, the personal data protection law, which implies that all of those handling personal data from, for example, customers that manages it at the cloud, like accounting systems and uh, mailing systems, et cetera, should get, receive a certification from INAI, the federal, or well, the National Information Access Institute. We have to take care about it. It sounds interesting and good, but Watch out because many people manage this data and could be small companies. How they're going to achieve uh, or pay for a certification, which will have to be invented, you know? And then uh, on the federal labor law, they are looking and pushing for the uh, handicapped people to impose minimum 5% of handicapped people working at companies, affirmative action, and uh, an adequation on the installations of the of the uh, of the company so that these people can work pretty well it's a very good and noble uh, in initiative the problem is how in the uh, let's say almost five million well, four million companies in Mexico how you can manage the 97 percent small companies to handle this that's that's very difficult well, let's talk about the events this week. Another will have uh, agreement relations impact and the tax 
reform in 2022 on March 9th. We have a, a, a breakfast with former uh, Supreme Court Minister Margarita Luna Ramos. This is tomorrow. Uh, this is uh, on the 8th, uh, celebrating, or not celebrating because it's not a celebration, commemorating the Women's Day. Uh, we have the IMEF uh, Corporate Government Committee with the uh, how to, to create the business board, the, the board of administration or management and the meetings. We have the uh, committee of tax studies with uh, the value of shares. We have the competitive committee with uh, talking about cybersecurity uh, along the war, Ukraine and uh, Russia. And we invite you to listen to the podcast on the 48th episode of ANADE talking about the economic and tax analysis under the event that we have 2022 perspectives. Well, what's new on the following week's uh, indicators? Well, we will have information on uh, product, industrial production for Europe, several data, trade balance in the US. Uh, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, industrial production and consumer prices in China and Europe. We have uh, uh, also inflation in the US, very important for us. Inflation in Europe, I already say that. And in he will show several indicators, consumption con confidence, uh, productivity, inflation for consumers and product producers, uh, automotive data for high weight vehicles, industrial per states, uh, on the monthly basis for November, uh, international balance trade on merchandises for January, tourism, um, vehicles on circulation, and industrial activity in January. And uh, Banco de Mexico will talk about the statement on Tuesday, the like international reserve statement, and international trade revised information, and also as every week the uh, legislative and jurisdictional radar from Manade. Well, we talked about solo negocio. In solo negocios last week, we talked with Guillermo Soria about uh, tax sanctions and requirements from the authority. We talked about monetary policy on Tuesday, different diffusion indicators like the PMI we just talked about here and inflationary pressures. I talked about tax impacts and economic indicators for businesses. Jutech spoke about uh, training programs. And I talked about on Friday about economic context and the legal perspective for the future. Having said that, we are taking you for your attention. And well, we'll see you next week. Here's the data to, for you to contact us if you decided to. And I uh, appreciate your attention. Have a great week.